welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Angelise Alexander Martin. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Don't Let the Holidays Sabotage Your Weight Loss Goals. Angelise, welcome to the show. First, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I'm really excited and uh, thank you for receiving my article. So we'll get into that article in a little bit, but first off, mm -hmm. can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah. So I'm a family physician by trade. I went to family medicine uh, residency. And as I opened my own business back in 2009, I started to expand what I do. And now I focus more on medical weight loss, addiction medicine, hormone balancing, and body sculpting. And I tell patients all the time that the majority of what I do, I did not learn in medical school. And I didn't learn in residency. And so it's things that I learned on my own. And so when you talk to different physicians, a lot of the other physicians are probably in the same boat that I was in and that we're just not exposed to everything in medical school and residency. So there's a lot of knowledge gaps. And I found that these are very um, important areas that a lot of people need treatment for. And I've just gotten very passionate about it and having a lot of fun with what we do. So tell me your approach to obesity and weight loss that isn't necessarily taught in medical I mean... <sighs> We talk about the definition of obesity and maybe we talk about some medications, but often as a family physician, I would have a patient who would come in for, I don't know, diabetes or strep throat. And as you're reaching your hands on the door, oh, by the way, could you give me something to help my weight? Mm -hmm. And I knew that there was more to it than just medication, but I really didn't know what else? I, I just, I wasn't trained. I didn't know. And so I knew also, especially in Ohio, that there's a lot of um, restrictions about medication. So I typically wouldn't prescribe something because I didn't want to set somebody up for failure. I, I just knew that there was more to it than meets the eye. So now as I look back, I wish I had that knowledge, but I didn't, but that's what I say. What was I taught in medical school? Um, you know, with obesity medicine, it's in addition to anti-obesity medications, there's uh, nutritional education, mm -hmm. behavior modification, physical activity. And I just did not have the knowledge um, or the counseling skills or motivational interviewing skills to talk to patients and, and help them address these areas. So give us some sample patients that you see in a typical day and walk us through what you would do with them. So when patients come to see us, one of the fun things we get to do is a body composition analysis. So we don't just weigh the patient. We actually put them on a device that tells us how much fat they have and how much water and muscle and what their metabolism is. And when they initially come in, it um, allows us to predict how much weight they could lose in just six weeks. And that's often exciting because, well, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about different treatment options. You know, how aggressive do you want to be? How slow do you want to be? Are medications a good fit for you? Which medicine would be a good fit? What's your medical history? Just trying to figure out the best way to help them reach their goals. And through the patients I've seen, I've gotten patients off of their blood pressure medicine. I've gotten them off their diabetes medicine. I had a lady who I got off of her opiate pain pill because mm -hmm. her pain was better because she was able to lose weight. So in, in classic medicine, it seems like we're always adding a medication to treat the condition. And in obesity medicine, my goal is, can I reduce your medication mm -hmm. by helping you lose weight? And can I improve your quality of life? Because... Now maybe you can go exercise or you feel better. You can play with the grandkids. It's, it's improving their quality of life. And that's really my, my, my heart and my passion. So when you talk about um, the various options raising, ranging mm -hmm. from conservative to more aggressive, so mm -hmm. give us some examples along that spectrum. Yeah. So with my most aggressive program is a, we call it our quick start program. And basically I put patients on meal replacements for a period of time. That's up to them. Nothing is set in stone. I've had several patients drop hundred pounds using exclusively meal replacements. And that's very, very exciting. And so when they come in for follow-up, again, we don't just weigh them. We do the body comp so we can see what has changed. We want to make sure that they're losing mainly fat and that they're not losing as much muscle or as much water, because if so, that's not healthy weight loss. And then with that, we, we do counseling with each other visits as well. Again, trying to be modify the behavior and, mm. and help them understand what they're doing because I want them to change their behavior. So five years down the road, they're not doing what they're doing now. Because if they are, that's kind of what put the weight on to begin with. So we're trying mm -hmm. to make a, a big impact there. And so, the, you know, there's the quick start program. And then we have some patients who want to have some meal replacements and a regular meal. And that's mm -hmm. our modified program. And there was a study recently that said how critical those meal replacements are really for long-term success, that they just they make things easier. They help control the calories. I myself am on a modified program where I have three meal replacements a day and a regular meal. Um, 
and, and there can be some good weight loss with that. And then our last program is the ease-in program where there's really no meal replacements. It's all regular food. We put patients on a, um, a balanced deficit diet, talk mm -hmm. about how many calories for them to aim for. Food has how many calories per serving, measuring, monitoring, logging what you get. So with all three, they're very structured. And then there can be some overlap. So I have some patients who do all meal replacements during the week. And then they may have a meal with the family on the weekend, or they may start on no meal replacements and say, Hey, you know what? Let me add one here or there. So we can blend things as well to meet a patient's need. It's, it's, you know, what is their goal? How can we help them get to their goal in a, a safe and effective way? And what do you mean by meal replacements? So for instance, we have protein shakes, you know, mm -hmm. we have medical grade meal replacements. They have typically about 15, 16 grams of protein and maybe as low as hundred calories and uh, lower in carbohydrates. So a very different quality product than you go to the grocery store. And we can prescribe these for patients. It can help them lose weight quickly. Um, wonderfully tasting. I mean, <laughs> really good tasting stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but that allows them to lose their weight quickly. And then from there, we would transition them to more regular food. And then as they introduce food, again, when a counsel on how can you prepare this, how many calories to aim for, because we're trying to educate along the way, but if they lose that weight quickly and safely, that's going to encourage them all the more because, wow, I really have mm -hmm. been able to do this. And then, you know, we also use anti-obesity medications. There's a variety of medicines out there. In Ohio, things are a little bit stickier than some other states as far as regulations we have to follow, but we do use medications when appropriate that have been a great adjunct as well. All right. Let's talk about the Kevin MD article that you wrote. It's mm -hmm. titled, Don't Let the Holidays Sabotage Your Weight Loss Goals. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I counsel my patients on is that typically between Thanksgiving and Valentine's day, we can gain up to 10 pounds. And most people don't realize that it's the holidays, you know, we're in the hibernate and they, they don't really think, but that may not be the best, especially if you're trying to stay healthy and have a healthy weight. So we talk about, well, things to be aware of, how can you reduce the likelihood of that happening? Or, you know, I had a patient I just saw last week who actually lost a pound and a half over the last two weeks, including Thanksgiving. And that's perfect because she was able to lose despite that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we talk about being aware of the visual trigger of food. You, you see food and there's this subconscious desire to do something about it, put it mm -hmm. in our mouth. So sometimes we just have to get it out of sight, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I had a, a company recently come in to talk with me and they brought in a, a canister of cookies and the cookies were in the kitchen and I found myself gravitating to the cookies. Sure. And I said, no, 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 I don't need these. And, you know, someone else take them. Um, but I recognize that myself. And so trying to help other people be aware of that, because if I do that, you may do that. And so if you understand it, now you can plan accordingly and say, well, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll pass on that. Sure. Or, you know, one of my patients told me that as she walks at work, there was a cookie or a, a candy canister on someone's desk and she kept coming by and getting it. And we said, well, maybe mm -hmm. you should take a different path. You know, it's a visual trigger. Sure. So just seeing the food, or if you're preparing goodies for someone else, cookies and things, and you see them, don't sample them, you know, yeah. let, let your youngster sample them. You're trying to make them for someone else, but just recognize that you see it and you want to, you sample it. Thanksgiving is a big time where there's uh, tend to typically an abundance of food. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people go into with the idea of almost overindulging deliberately. And well, that's not very good for your weight if yeah. you're really trying to lose weight. So we said, well, maybe if you really think you want to sample everything, Maybe take just a tablespoon of everything. That way you can mm -hmm. sample it, but you're not really getting a full serving of anything to help reduce your calories. Or if you are limiting what you get, maybe have a full serving of fewer things and don't get seconds. But again, having a strategy so that it doesn't throw you off or don't go in an empty stomach. If you arrive and there's food and you're already hungry, you're probably going to overdo it just because you're hungry to begin with. So if you have a snack or something beforehand, you're more likely to be in control. Um, and then, of course, the effect of alcohol. You know, I, mm. I talk to my patients all the time about alcohol has a lot of calories. You, you know, there's seven calories yeah. in just one gram of alcohol. That's more than carbs and more than in protein. The only more um, calorie-dense macronutrient is fat. And alcohol tends to make people want to eat more. So not that you can't consume alcohol, but just understand the cause and effect. And I've had many patients tell me the same thing, like, yeah, you know, I have that glass of wine and I find myself eating more. And okay, well, as long as you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you, you may or may not make that decision to still have that glass of wine because, you know, the alcohol is going to have calories. And if you eat more, that's going to 
not help you lose weight. <laughs> so those kind of things that I just like to counsel patients on just to help them prepare and to plan wisely so that hopefully come Valentine's Day, they haven't put 10 pounds on. Now, during the pandemic over the last almost two years, I've seen a lot mm -hmm. of patients in my clinic gain significant amounts of weight yes. just because of, you know, whatever lockdown and they're stuck inside, sometimes unable yes. to exercise. So I'm sure you're seeing this as well. So mm -hmm. what kind of advice do you have for these patients? Looking for opportunities, you know, yes, you may be on lockdown. Well, how can you still be physically active? Are you able to walk where you are? Are you able to go outside the house, walk around the block? Are you able to do upper body exercises? Are you able to still stretch? And even on lockdown, you still have control over what you're eating. You know, you're still preparing food. So are you preparing food in a healthy way? Are you frying everything? Or are you removing the visible fats? Are you having fruits and vegetables? Are you having a lot of processed foods? So just Again, that, that awareness. And yes, there was that lockdown. We talk about people gaining the COVID-19 pounds, mm -hmm. so to speak, and it's very, very real. But understand what led to that. And then what changes can you make to try to reverse that? Also fun for people to partner with someone, mm -hmm. you know, exercise with a buddy. Or I told families, hey, go walk around the block as a family afterwards. Because as the parents, you're setting the example for your children and, and trying to help them learn healthy habits as well. At what point should patients consider seeing a weight loss or obesity medicine specialist like yourself? That, you know, that's a great question. Obesity by itself is defined when someone has a BMI of uh, 30 or greater, mm -hmm. but there's also the stage before, and, and I should say BMI is a calculation where you look at your height and your weight and you compare the two. But before you get obese, there's pre-obesity, which is really the BMI between 25 and 30. And that also depends on certain populations because the, the Asian population, for instance, that actually drops a little bit lower, how we define pre-obesity and obesity. But, you know, if you're going in for your regular physical, hopefully your weight is being measured. Though I, true story, I had a patient who saw their doctor for 16 years and their weight was never measured. Mm -hmm. So that was really kind of sad. And <laughs> she said something's wrong and we came and did something about the weight. But hopefully that's being discussed then of, hey, you know what, you're pre-obese, you're obese, or if you have um, complications that could be related to obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, you know, we call um, diabetes, diabesity, because mm. the vast majority of people with type 2 diabetes are obese. There's exceptions, but they almost go hand in hand. So for anyone who's got type 2 diabetes, I would say, hey, go see a weight loss specialist. Um, mm. Again, I've been able to get people off the medication and that's really fun. So that, I guess, would be a good threshold if you have those complications or if your BMI has hit 25, that's a, a good point to at least start having a conversation so things don't get worse. We're talking to Angelise Alexander-Martin. She is a family physician and obesity specialist, and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Don't Let the Holidays Sabotage Your Weight Loss Goals. Angelise in the exam room, as you can imagine, as in primary care, we have very limited time with patients, and mm -hmm. a majority of my patients fall in that category of obesity. Now, mm -hmm. given our limited time, what are some really quick, actionable, effective tips that most primary care clinicians yeah. can give that patient in a 15-minute office visit? Yeah. So as I said earlier, often obesity comes up in the, oh, by the way, can I have mm. a prescription for X, Y, Z? And what I would try to do during that visit is say, hey, you know what? I would love to help you. There's more to obesity than just a pill. Please let's schedule a time to really focus on it. Because as I said, there's nutrition education, behavior modification, physical activity, anti-obesity medicine, all of that goes in um, effectively taking care of a patient with pre-obesity obesity. So, you know, just as if someone came in and they said, oh, by the way, I have this ward, I want frozen or something. Mm -hmm. I may say, hey, I would love to help you with that. I want to give it the time and attention it deserves. Could you please schedule a follow-up appointment? And we will focus on that because it is very important. And I appreciate your interest in it. And I want to help you, but I would really encourage them to set up a separate time to, to focus on that. And if that's something that you're, you're not comfortable with, I mean, again, mm -hmm. I wasn't trained, I didn't know that I would try to partner with someone else who, who is familiar with obesity medicine to, to help that individual. Because again, I remember people wanting me to prescribe them X medication and I just didn't want to set them up for failure. And especially in Ohio, there's certain rules we have to follow in prescribing it. And I don't want to give you something and not give you the tools to be successful with it because it's, it's a package of things that really need to go together for successful weight loss. And my final question, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave? We see it's a medical condition and it should be treated as such. It's not cosmetic. It's actually a medical condition. So we want to take it seriously. And there are so many complications that go along with that. And just um, by helping someone lose weight can greatly improve their quality of life. Uh, again, feeling better, being having more energy, being able to play with the kids, running, jumping, 
Uh, and I talk about looking in the mirror, mirror and just smiling a little mm -hmm. bit more because you like what you see. So just take it seriously and know that you can have such an impact on someone's quality of life if you can help them lose weight. And again, if you um, are limited in some of those skills, then partner with someone who does have them. And um, I think your patient will, will thank you when they, you know, you can maybe reverse some things to just improve that quality of life. Angelise, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.